Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pearls of Wisdom. It's full moon again. Time is just really fast and I have a reading ready for you. So you can have a look at the chart. It looks kind of, yeah, a little bit difficult here with the red. But um, I mean, in general, we have to see that every full moon is an opposition. And I see very often that people don't really understand about what an opposition really is. Like, you know, when you go through life, if something is opposite of you, you see it, right? When it's to the right or to the left, it's maybe not so clearly visible if, if like if it's opposite of you. So when we can see that the opposition is, a, is an aspect that forces us to look at something. When we have the square, you know, what is on the left, on the right, you don't see it so clearly. And this is why it's more difficult. This is why it's called the challenge and the resistance, because it's more difficult to see. But the opposition is always something we can see, we have to confront. And we say also, like an opposition, if you don't act, you have to react or it will act with you. Something will happen that you that will force you to react if you do not choose to act. So when we look at this opposition here, we have the sun in Leo and we have the moon with the retrograde Saturn in Aquarius. And at the world horoscope, it's exactly in between. See, here, the cusp of ninth house is, is in the half sum between the two of them. So yeah. ninth house is Sagittarius. And this will, I will talk about that later because here we have also the DC is just still in Sagittarius. So this is a confrontation again that I have talked many times about that we need to move beyond um, the boundaries, beyond the rules, the regulations, the habits. Stop obeying, stop to listen to who you really are what is whispering in your own heart and not listen to what other people say. And I recently also had a very interesting video, little video that somebody was telling it, that what other people think of you is not even your business. And I have seen that many times that I was uh, kind of thinking that this person thinks this of me or that or whatever. And generally I wasn't right. So it's just the most important thing that now we let go of what other people think of us, but just come back to who we are, what we are supposed to do, and focus now on ourselves. And I want to repeat that what I just wrote also in my group that um, I was recommending a video from Saratoga Ocean last weekend. And she said that so eloquently and so perfectly that the dark and the light is in fact not an opposition. It is not polarity. Because the light is simply the absence of light. So if you bring in light, darkness will be gone. So this is what can we do. And when we have the moon here in Aquarius, our soul recon uh, reconnected to the soul, we can say Aquarius, no higher self is the angel, but I don't want you to focus on angels outside of you, but focus on the angel within and learn again that the divine is within us. So we don't have to search for it outside of us. And it is also written in so many beautiful stories. If you go and read stories of masters, they always, they went on a journey and the journey was important, but at the end, they found themselves when they were home again. And home does not mean so much of a location as they were focused on themselves because enlightenment lies within you. You cannot get enlightened um, from the outside. You can learn, but you have to unlearn again because you have to be empty. You have to be um, clear. Um, we can also say like a child, innocent in a way. And this is the topic that comes up here very strongly with retrograde Saturn. 
that we have to throw away all the rules and the regulations that we need to go beyond it's i said to a friend yesterday it feels a little bit like you know when you pull that back the arrow to shoot this is the situation that we are now because look at also here we have so many planets going retrograde and just in a few days um venus goes direct but then jupiter goes retrograde and this is on more um, a, um what, what do we have september right? september 4th is venus goes direct and the fifth that is to be the turning retrograde so we can see that this is that retrograde, especially Jupiter as the ruler of ninth house, the ruler, the ruler of Sagittarius, where we have a retrograde um, Pluto in the moment, is very important to understand that this is to find the creative power, the creation power within ourselves. Don't give that energy away. It's within you. As long as you search in the outside, you will not find it. And in a way, we can also say that the astrology chart that we have, like every chart you can compare with your own, that triggers certain lessons. And when we have a situation with Saturn and Moon together, then because Moon is the opposite, generally Moon is in, in Cancer, Saturn is in Capricorn. This is the opposite sign. So there is a tension, is another opposition from the position of the sign, which are ruled by those planets. And an opposition is always forcing you to look at it. And when two planets that are in natural for opposite sides are coming together in a conjunction, it's a very similar topic. But you know, when Saturn is kind of sitting here on your shoulder, it is very difficult to see. So conjunctions are always the most difficult to see, to understand. But here we have with this opposition, the sun, the sun is like the light shines on it. So the light shines on this opposition from, from the other side that you can see the conjunction. And this will help you to understand what it is needed to go forward in the moment. And what is needed is really to let go of rules that have that don't serve us anymore. Like, just imagine whatever you have learned in the past that was serving the old paradigm. Whatever we have been taught, and it doesn't matter what topic we, we uh, touch here, it's everything is the same. It was the old paradigm, and it was within a system of slavery. I cannot say it in a different word, but because we were slaves of a ruling elite, even if they pay us, <laughs> we're still slaves. And I think I remind you quickly of that story that I shared once before. There was a, some kind of a lord, and they had the workers. And they were building something, and then the lord said, to a wise man, um, you know, my workers are just not working well. I don't know what to do. And then he said, okay, I'm going to put on the working clothes and I go and work with them and I figure out what's happening. And then he figured also out that they plan um, kind of boycott or sabotage or whatever. And he was with them for a while. And then he went back to this king or whoever he was. And he said, you know, you will never get the better result um, in that situation. They plan to overthrow you. They plan to kill you. And, you know, even if you give them something in the moment, it will happen again and it will happen again. So I would suggest set them free. Tell them they're free. And those who work, you pay them some money. You have to pay for the slaves anyway, right? You have to pay for the food. You have to pay when they're sick. And there is still a lot going on. But I tell you, once you pay them, they will work better. So the king was very skeptic in the beginning. But then finally, he, he did it because he trusted this uh, vice master. And he set them all free. And there was big celebration. Everybody was very happy. And then he set the price for the work. So they started to work and they, it was true, they worked better. And, you know, then suddenly there was an invention and instead of just carrying the stones forward, 
one of the guys started to make uh, uh, some, uh, a wagon with some wheels and there were more stones going forward. And so it started that because they receive um, money and the better they work, the more money they receive. So they work better. But it was still a win-win situation for the king because it doesn't in the end cost them more because the work went on faster. The people were more happy. There were no more riots. And so he still was gaining. And this is exactly what they do with us. We have the illusion and those people who think they are free, they are probably the worst slaves ever. Because when you think you're free, that's the big illusion. Because look at the system that you depend on. And this is exactly what, what is happening. But we have, if we have to free ourselves, it has to be first in the mind and not the, the physical part of it is the last step. So if we move to free ourselves in the mind that, like, for example, the creativity that we have, we can use do step out of the system for example you can do little things yourself and sell yourself and don't go and buy it in the big shopping malls or you can have like um you know even online like when you have ebay and others there are lots of little shops that are selling online and they make a living out of this so we can use in a way the system to support us but in a way, also um, move beyond to be more free with what we do. I know in the moment it's difficult, especially when we come to the topic paying online. I pay everything cash what I can when I go out shopping, whatever. But I also buy things or sell things online. And there I'm in the system. But still, it gives me much more freedom because I can do what I want and I can um, work whenever I want at the time I want. And I don't have to be in an office at a certain time or whatever. So I think it's step by step go forward. And the more we take back our power, the more the light increases on the planet, the more people see the game that is going on, the higher the consciousness level of the whole earth is rising and this is again the Aquarius topic here what is what we have to do is rise the consciousness of the whole earth and then again remember when we said that darkness is only absence of light then is a point where we don't even have to fight anymore because the darkness is gone the more light we shed the darkness will vanish the less power they have over us the more it's very curious what is happening now when they prepare for another pandemic. Uh, it's, I'm really curious how people are going to react. How high is the consciousness level now on the planet? Are they still going? Are they still falling for all that? We'll see. We'll see very soon. So you can see this opposition that we have here, the sun in Leo. Take back your power. Your personality is very important in this game because this is the um, the frame that kind of holds you. But it you have to realize that that personality, that ego, should not rule you. But you should be ruled or connected, not ruled, but connected to the higher aspect of yourself that your inspiration, intuition can fully work and you will know at any time what you have to do. It just reminds me of one a video I was uh, watching from Cryon that he said, you know, when you old souls, you don't even have to do kinesiology anymore because you just will know. And I did for many, many, many years when I went, for example, shopping, I used the kinesiology test to check if something is really organic or if it's good for me to buy or a book, if it's really what I want or not. So you can save a lot of money if you do a kinesiology test. But this was still a kind of a crook that I had to use 
but now the inspiration and intuition the the more light you become the more clear it comes through and the less doubts you have what it is you're supposed to do so this is that opposition that is very strong and actually supported by all the retrograde planets meaning go inside you don't try to um do something to start something that has um like a business or whatever it is you know now it's the time to go inside to contemplate that also we have here a retrograde neptune opposite to a retrograde venus in cancer it can be very confusing this time and we are not so sure anymore if this is my feeling or not and because of the whole paradigm that is over the earth, there is a lot of confusion, especially what happened also on Maui, on other places. Uh, people are very, very disturbed. Um, this is also something that really kind of uh, affected me a lot. And I had hard to fight to really understand what's going on there because so much cruelty is just absolutely not imaginable anymore and uh, those souls that have sacrificed themselves i mean this goes far beyond um, understanding they must be very very high evolved spiritual beings but you know the earth is not yet that ready to move on there is still you know there is still too much obedience there is still too many i mean here i see people still run around in masks so whatever they're gonna announce they, they're gonna uh, go in and wear masks again so this is something that is very difficult to look at but still we have a reason here and we have to shine the light and that's the reason why we are here wherever we are in the world so when we look at this at this uh, aspect here, that is like um, the retrograde Venus is like really we have to go into our feelings. There is nobody else gonna tell us the truth. We will feel it. We will be connected to the heart. And I mentioned that once before that the fifth heart chamber was found, and what I understand is that is the connection to the divine and uh, it might be the key to what is going on in the future but this is not for this uh, video topic but just maybe you do some research you find out something and then we have see Jupiter here is in the 11th house which is the house of Aquarius with um, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius in Aries and again Aries the beginning at the beginning of something new the, the beginning of I don't I don't like to say the new age you know um, because it's not like it's not like bang it turn off the light or turn it on it's it's a transition and the transition is not complete yet see the here is also Uranus is retrograde Jupiter will turn retrograde on the 5th of September so this is again going into yourself and I see it as remembering remembering means become a member again of my spiritual family to understand who I really am to understand that I'm in a, in a prior, prior way I'm not the human being but I have a human experience now we can also say everything what you have um you can lose but what you are you will always be so our physical body we will lose one day because we have a body we have a hand we have legs to walk we this is all what we have but that's not who what we are who we are and this i am that i am that is the thing that is moving forward and that is not the identity of the ego of the personality but the ego the personality we see in this expectation here is the vessel that carries us at, and make 
it possible that we have this human experience? And also with the retrograde Mercury, this is not a time for big communication outside. There will be a lot of misunderstanding. When you look at the Quincung's line going to retrograde Chiron, it is still about healing, about understanding um, who we really are. You know, healing comes from the word holy. And it has nothing to do what doctors do or what is being done in a hospital or whatever. This has nothing to do with healing. Healing, this is something that is happening within you that has nothing to do with medicine and with taking medicine. Healing can only be supported by subtle energies like flower essences, homeopathy, um, even acupuncture is, is like a connection between the subtle and the physical body that can bring energies in flow again to reconnect the both bodies together. So we have the physical body as our last expression here. The physical body is in a way also a mirror of what is happening in our life. With all these retrograde planets, and many of you have maybe experienced that also in the last, not just short time, but quite a few years already, that we are in a process of healing. And that means that symptoms are coming up and that we have to heal, but not cure in the body with medicine, whatever, but to understand. And if you are not familiar with the book, The Healing Power of Illness from Torvald Detlefsen, this is a book you can find in online. It's easy to find. I really recommend you to read it to give you the understanding of what illness really is. But I also recommend you please read the first on the page first and then move on just don't go and pick one um is one illness whatever because it won't make sense because this is a building up it's a step by step by step going forward because if somebody has cancer for example this is not happening just as cancer this has a long history how it came to be and this is what we have to understand that we can reverse the process and once you can reverse the process, you really can heal. And the body, of course, will reflect the healing. But I don't think that our body uh, is always 100% okay. Um, it's just like when you look at the environment and everything in a moment, I, I, don't, I don't know anybody who I would say is healthy, completely healthy and healed. And that's okay. It's still part of the experience that we have here within polarity. But it's important to understand. And when a symptom comes up, not just run and take any chemical remedies, but try to figure out what is really going on in my body and why do I have a certain symptom to understand it. You can also look in my videos. I have a whole series where I talk about the more or less the healing power of illness. I explain what the symptoms are and how it happened that we get sick. Now we have Mars here at the IC. Um, again, Mars down here. Uh, we have to find our own power. We have to rule within our own power. And when this Virgo is connected also with Chiron again, um, it is the harvest of what we have done, the experience. It's about experience. It's about understanding. So once we, we let go of all that, what we have learned in the old paradigm, everything that was um, taught in favor of like making us workers, like the slave system, I, I explained before that, you know, um, especially those who are, have the best grades or the uh, best, um, we can say, brainwashed and the best workers in the future. And you can see that very often people who were not so good students because they didn't believe all the brainwash, but they came later, genius like, you know, Einstein and other people 
who have really invented big things. They were very often not the best students and had problems in school because they did not just obey and believe what the teacher was saying. They were thinking for themselves. And this is in a way, the way where we have to go now. We go inside with all these retrograde planets. The world will stand on the head in the next couple months. And I recommend you to, if you have not something at home yet, I really don't know how economics are going on, but this is also a collapse uh, in that way. And I said also in my group that please, now it's still very good to like you can buy fresh fruit you can buy everything an investment that would really be worse is to buy a little dehydrator and a vacuum sealer and go and buy now fruit go to the farmers markets buy what what you can and dry it because it's easy when you have dried food um to do things with it and there is practically everything you can practically dry and i i love it like for example i have lots of dried bananas because i have a banana forest here also so this is a fabulous snack and for example a coconut and a banana and a couple of my dried bananas that's nearly a full meal already and this will serve uh, will really help you to have also all the vitamins and minerals what you need you can also go online and figure a little bit out my friend told me she showed me that like for example vegetables that are rich in um, calcium or rich in whatever so that you go and buy them and you dehydrate them vacuum pack them and you can use it afterwards and you know if we have a problem or not it doesn't really matter when the winter comes in those countries that are really going to be cold whatever you have you have it um, when i was still living in switzerland i had my family my kids i had a cellar and i had a garden and my cellar was my shopping mall in the winter and i usually had all things myself including i had carrots and potatoes and apples and whatever you need and wine wine good wine <laughs> And uh, we had all the food uh, that we needed. The only thing I went shopping was like for in the, in the we had fresh milk at that time still. And the, what do you call this? Where the farmers bring the milk. So we went still with the little bucket to get milk every day. And more or less the rest I had, I was baking my own bread. If you like bread, bake it. And then you don't have all that stuff inside that they put in the commercial bread. And it's delicious and it's much more nutritious when you do it yourself. So there is a lot you can do yourself now for this time to come. So this is why we need to reflect. You have to go inside now and look what you can do for you, for your family, for your loved ones. Because it will change and the change is never easy because we are so much stuck in our habits. But it's okay, too. I mean, that's why we are here. That's why you, I, and all people are here. We have agreed to live now. And the reason why we live now, because we want to experience this shift and this change. So let go of the resistance. Try to enjoy new things. Try to enjoy to, for example, make your own food instead of buying it and putting it in the microwave. Throw your microwave away. This is pure poison. And um, yeah, I wish you a really good time to come because it is that kind of narrow tunnel that we are going through now that we are coming out in the light very soon. And I, I think when I look also a little bit further into the chart that shifting is happening now and already next year you will see huge differences in what is happening and the next few months are very important and are keys that's why it is so important that we keep our energy up and we send light just send light make a little meditation in the morning and in the evening when you wake up before you go to bed or in bed already just do that for a couple minutes. Send light. Just imagine the globe in a beautiful pink, unconditional love light. 
And uh, if everybody does that, I think the shift will happen much faster and uh, resistance will just melt away. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope I give you some good tips what you can do now. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up and I will come back for the next reading again next dark moon. Bye-bye. Thank you.